Well, I had to pick a warm day in January to run the hose from the house into the shop because uh, if it's too cold out, the hose will freeze really quick. So I think we're safe today. I think it's around four or five degrees here. Hose comes in under the door. Geez, I just squashed my hose with the door. Okay, I'll have to put that up a little bit. But I connect the uh, hose to, and I rigged up this valve so I can shut it off from here. Because I put a new heater core in. New heater core in the truck uh, a while back. So I got the heater core already, the new one already placed in there. And uh, the old one is already been retired to the scrap bucket. Now it looks a little bit bigger but they've made uh, compensations on the sides of this to make it fit better in the hole. Um, this actually has 14 runs and this one is 13 so even though it's smaller that one has more uh, um, tubes in it. But anyways, this, uh, this one is uh, destined for the boneyard. And uh, we took the rad. The rad's been out and flushed, and I polished the tank and made some changes on that, of course. And uh, But the block never got flushed out, so that's what I'm going to do here today. Got a flushing tee in here, and there's the adapter. And... Uh, course a valve so I can shut it off from here without without having to run up to the house and shut it off so yeah I know the the antifreeze that came out of it was pretty goopy stuff oh yuck speaking of puke obviously we're gonna be changing out this uh, antifreeze it's looks like it's long overdue and it looks like puke but uh, well let's get in there and uh, dump that into containers to to uh, dispose of it properly and uh, yeah I'd like to give it a good flush here and see see what comes out it shouldn't be too bad because it's, you know, it doesn't sit outside much and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't get driven a lot. So, uh, anyways, let's, uh, let's get after it and see what happens here. Okay, I got a pail down there. And actually I've got a couple of pails down there. And, uh, I'm going to flush what, what appears to be antifreeze out of it first and then the next few flushes I'll do a, a, just with water because once I see the antifreeze come out of the block um, then I don't have to worry about the antifreeze being on my driveway when I pour the water out so to speak if you know what I mean okay I got a water connection with a valve on it that uh, and I'm hooked into the heater hoses here. Now I put a new heater core in this um, a while back now. And this is the, the new heater core is in, the, in there. And uh, I never did get to flush the block out. So the, since the heater core is brand new, I didn't bother want to bother flushing crap into it. So, um, we're just we're just doing the block and the, the rads um, exempt as, as well because I already flushed it when I had it out so anyways let's uh, turn turn the water back on and you can see there's a bucket down there that has that's the one that has the antifreeze in it 
the water was coming out pretty clear very clear actually so I'm gonna put another bucket under there and uh, it'll be just uh, a flush with water there shouldn't be any antifreeze in it so okay that's got that antifreeze put away this should be nice clear water now Oops, we got a leaker here somehow. Yep, that looks pretty clean now. Yeah, that looks pretty clear. So this homemade contraption works all right. I can see me running back and forth to the house to shut the tap off. That wouldn't go well, especially running on ice. <laughs> uh oh. oh. There it is, crystal clear now. We're done. <laughs>